I've been learning game dev for a few months now, and recently I've noticed something. When I have an idea for a new enemy or mechanic in the game I'm making, I'm getting slightly better at imagining how to implement it. This might only be true for relatively simple ideas, but I didn't have this a few months ago. I didn't have anything in terms of game dev knowledge, but that shows I'm improving, which means the game is also serving its purpose, but more on that later. First, we need to talk about playtesting. From what I can tell, it's a pretty important step in the process of making a game. This is my learning project though, so I'm just kind of adding into the game whatever I feel like learning next. I did have my wife try the game though, and she thought it was way too difficult. She hasn't had a lot of experience in games like this, so that definitely played into it. But it made me think of what I could do to make the game accessible to more people. What if I added a difficulty setting? Since this is a setting that would need to be easily accessible to the rest of the game, even across separate scenes, I created a difficulty autoload. I had some experience with creating autoloads from when I added music into the game, and it's super easy to do in Godot. I then created some variables that I'll use to change certain aspects of the game, like the speed of the enemies and their spawn rates. The higher the difficulty, the faster and more frequent the enemies. After adding a new button in the settings menu and connecting these variables to the enemy movement and spawn timers, we have a working difficulty setting. Let me test it out real quick. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. All right, time to add a confirmation screen for returning to the main menu. I really don't want anyone to accidentally quit while 10 minutes into a good run. There. With that done, we're now overdue for a new enemy. One that shoots. Luckily, getting another kind of enemy to spawn didn't take long since I've done this a few other times already. So once I got the design locked in, don't laugh, I had to decide how I wanted it to shoot. My first thought was to just send a laser in the direction of the player, but then I thought, the player isn't able to shoot diagonally. Maybe this enemy shouldn't either. Instead, I decided to make a system where the direction of the bullet can only be up, down, left, or right. This might sound pretty easy for the player, but when there's 15 other enemies chasing you, now with enemy lasers to dodge too, it gets... tough. With the new enemy done, we can now add additional waves for the player to fight through. This might be one of my favorite parts because of how satisfying it is to turn enemies on and off and adjust their spawn rates in the waves controller I made. When I'm done with this stage, the game officially has more content to play around with. This didn't take nearly as long as I thought it was going to though, which is cool, but it's really making me do some thinking. Let's talk about the purpose of why I'm making this game. If you've seen some of my other videos, you probably know that I have a love for learning. Sometimes it doesn't even matter so much what I'm learning, as long as I'm learning something. But with game dev, it's a little different. I remember the first time my brother and I got a Dreamcast for Christmas, and we, along with my dad, spent what felt like hours trying to figure out how to beat the first fight of Sonic Adventure 1. It was a fight where you could probably beat it just by mashing the A button, but for us who were all new to video games, it was the most difficult thing, and also one of my favorite memories growing up. As I played more games in the following years, I remember thinking of how cool it would be to make one, but I had no idea how. Now with this project, I've been slowly learning, which was this game's whole purpose from the beginning. I didn't make this with the purpose to be my dream game. The purpose was to learn how to make a game. I wanted to learn what to do and what not to do. I didn't even have a plan for what the game was going to look like when I first started it, mostly because I didn't know what was possible. I just went with whatever seemed fun to me. But if the purpose of this game was to learn about game development, then this game served its purpose. Even though there's still a lot that I can do with it, and I've had a lot of comments with so many great ideas of what to add, the unorganization of the code is really starting to show. This is from my lack of programming knowledge when I first started, and even though I'm still far from an expert, I at least have a better idea of naming conventions and some better ways to keep things organized. Just look at my file system right now. This is anxiety inducing. Who needs folders, am I right? 
there are still a few things that I want to add into the game that I think will really test me, so I'll be making one final video on this game. After that, I still have a lot to learn, so I'll be testing myself on a completely new genre of game. You'll have to wait and see what that's going to be, but if you have any guesses, I'd love to hear them. So with that, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next video.